Hi and welcome. In this video I want to cover the general usage of the quantum. So I want to talk about um, the knobs, the menu structure and so on. Okay, so let's have a look on the panel first. What you can see on the panel are three LFOs out of six, all the three oscillators. You have access to the oscillator mix, just as you have access to the glide functionality. You have access to the analog filters, the digital former, which is some kind of um, digital filter, but you can also um, use it as a bit crusher and it has many more functionalities. You have a complex modulator, which is some kind of LFO, and you have access to three out of six envelopes in total. Which is maybe unusual for you is that you have a very colorful front panel and the colors have a meaning. For instance, every oscillator type has a different color so that you can see immediately which oscillator engine is loaded in which slot. And you can also um, use it for the modulation. You have two different kinds of knobs. You have POTIs, which you can turn normally. They are marked with a line. And you have encoders. Every encoder can be also pressed to access a different functionality. For instance, the display encoder can be pressed to change the speed of the encoder. The knobs above the display give you access to the different um, parts of your sound. So to the oscillators, your filters, envelopes, modulation, matrix, effects and so on. The additional knobs under the display are there for preset loading, to have access to the super fast uh, modulation routing and to a performance mode with the um, touch display modulation source, the sequencer and arpeggiator and to your favorite sounds. You can store your favorite sounds as sound sets, for instance for live performances, for direct access to your um, beloved sounds because the quantum can store thousands and thousands of sounds and it's maybe a bit hard to find um, the sound which you like very quickly. What's very interesting about the quantum is that you can um, store and load presets for almost every aspect of your sound. You can store for instance oscillator presets, filter presets and so on and use them directly in your sound. You can also export many aspects of your sound like wavetables on your SD card and on your USB stick to share it with other people or to just store them on your, on your computer and to load new wavetables and new um, samples and so on into the quantum. Okay, so let's have a look how this um, looks in a wavetable, you can press on tool for instance and import from wave load wavetable as a wavetable file and save it also on your SD card. And here you have the presets. So you have many presets, you can create your own presets and also import and export the presets on your, um, on your card. Okay, now let's have a look on the global menu. You can press the global button and then you have access to the global menu. The first um, part of the global section is the scope, which is um, a tool to see the audio output of your Blofeld. You have different types. And you can also decide which source you want to see. 
you can um, check the overall output of the quantum, but also the output of one oscillator, of the analog filters and so on. You can also access analyzing functions in the corner of your display. Normally you can see the behavior of all eight voices here in the corner. But you can also choose other um, analyzers. The next page in the global menu is the pitch. You can um, set the global pitch of the quantum, the master tuning and the scale. And you can also load your own scale file into the Blofelds. If you want your individual user scale. The next page is the audio page and here you can for instance record samples and process these samples. On the MIDI page you have access to the MIDI filters, to the controls which signals you want to um, process from the inputs which you want to send to your MIDI output. You can control the channels, of course, the beat synchronization and also the control mappings. Because you can map every uh, MIDI CC uh, message to every aspect of your sound. And then you have general settings. You, have, um, the, you can make a decision on which sound should be loaded on startup should be the quantum in the exact state as you turned it off. Um, do you want to load an initial sound or the very first patch? You can control the display brightness and the brightness of your LED. And I know that many people um, dislike very, um, very shiny and very powerful LEDs and you can turn it off to almost zero so that you can see only the color but um, they seem not to be enlightened anymore. But I think 80 is quite okay for me. And you have a screen saver. As I said in the first video, you have a OLED display. And when a OLED display shows the very same picture all the time, then it's, um, the picture burns into the display and you have some kind of ghosting effect. To prevent this, you can set a screen a screensaver. When the screensaver is on, the quantum is also still in the usage mode, so you can directly start playing, you can directly start changing your sound. Only the display is in the standby mode. In the next section, you can um, configure your editing mode. So for instance, um, the way you can change your parameters with the POTIS. The touch mode. The way you want to see the parameters. Do you want to stay on the display page um, even if you change some other parameters or should the display switch to the aspect of your sound which are changing? You can set up the 
pop-up time and you can also configure your default performance screen. When you click on the performance button you have access to the XY pad, to the arpeggiator and sequencer and also to your favorite sounds. And if you want quick access to your BPM you should cha change it to, to the sequencer page. In the next section we have the audio routing. So you can configure if the routing will be stored and used with every patch. So you can um, change the settings for every patch differently. Because you have two audio outputs, main and um, auxiliary. Or do you want to configure it globally and use always the global um, configuration. And the last section here is the color page. And you can change the color of every part of your sound on the front panel so that you can um, set it just like you associate it with the colors. You can also um, switch it to everything to the same color. You can make it everything red, everything blue. But I would recommend really to um, use different colors for different um, types of configurations because it, this aspect is very useful. And the last page is the system page. And here you can see exactly how much sampling memory you have, how long you are using the device, and you can also create a support log file if you have any problems. You can send Walder of these files and they can an analyze um, which configuration, which usage um, led to the problem you had. And this is also the place where you can do your updates. When you have operating system 1. Point something, you have to load your um, update file onto the SD card, but um, from operating system version 2 and above, you can also use the USB slot to plug in a USB stick and you can put your files on there and also press an update and um, the update will be processed. Okay, that was the general usage. In the next part, we want to have a focus on the sound structure, the layering and the performance aspects of the quantum. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like or a dislike, make a comment and thanks for watching and have a nice day.